Well, I think overall, I would say that this is definitely um, one of the more artistic results we've seen. So DeepSeek has come out with a new model, which is very interesting for a couple different reasons. But I think mainly the previous newest release from DeepSeek was a week or two ago. So that, of course, was DeepSeek v3.1 dash Terminus. But now we have DeepSeek v3.2 dash EXP, which is actually an experimental model that is going to replace Terminus. Now, there are some interesting architectural things, but in my quest to want to go ahead and kind of cut down on the verbosity of some of my introductions, We'll take a brief look at why this is cool, and then we'll jump in and do some fun testing. We see right here that this is live on the app web and API, and something that gives us a little insight into some of the interesting pieces of this new model are that these API prices have been cut by 50% plus. Now, that is only going to be a relevant factor for users of this specific API, but assuming this model's architecture can actually be applied to other types of models, this could be a trend hopefully in the future that we see in more than just DeepSeek models. Now, the cool thing about this is basically if we go ahead and just take a quick peek at this actual technique, actually before we do that, Here's the thing. So we see in the first X post right here, they say that benchmarks show V3.2 experimental performs on par with 3.1 terminus. And you may look at that and be like, okay, well, on par wouldn't really be representative of a leap. So why would you kind of release that or like promote it? And that is where the architectural uniqueness and cool factor of this release come into play. So if we look at this chart right here, we're basically going to see that the increase is in cost effectiveness and therefore efficiency of this experimental model where I think to put it very simply here's more expensive and there's the old model and then here's less expensive and here's the new model now of course there is more technical consideration that goes into that and for that we can quickly just look they did put out a small paper here it is actually rather relatively short obviously a lot of this is going to be a very niche thing for folks who would actually want to read this or even understand it but I think the simpler way to put this is basically they talk right here and they say that the prototype of this consists of two components, a lightning indexer and a fine grain token selection mechanism, which you may be like, well, Bijan, that's quite obvious. And no, <laughs> I think the easiest way to put this is that the old model could almost be thought of as having to answer a question and in doing so you need to read through every single page of a book you have available to you to actually come up with the answer. This new architecture could kind of be representative of instead of doing that you just can look at the actual index of a book and then know okay like this is in chapter x based on the index and then you know which specific pages to go look for to come up with the answer which would obviously be much quicker to actually come up with the answer and therefore more efficient. Now, that is obviously going to be an unscientific way to explain this, but I do believe it is um, good enough for, you know, a casual YouTube video. So with that, um, we're now going to go ahead and see why it makes sense, why, like, it's not a generational leap here or anything significantly beating the old model, but if it's doing it so much more efficiently and still scoring the same, that is actually then quite cool. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and do some light testing with this. So obviously we're just going to go ahead and do the browser-based operating system. I do not believe there's any changes here in terms of the context length between this and Terminus or anything like that. And Terminus did also have the ability to turn thinking on and off. So maybe we'll do one like more difficult prompt test with thinking on. I am going to zoom into this and I may be imagining things as I have been up for a decent bit of time, but I do feel like this actual user interface here looks different. I don't recall the background being so dark, but very interesting. Again, somewhat, okay, <laughs> definitely experimental. I am going to be honest here. So, <laughs> okay, first thing, this is, I can't move this. I can only kind of drag it side to side like that, and it doesn't seem to go away. So, oh, it did minimize, but there's obviously a little bit of um, issue down here. I like this background. I have to be honest, the, the abstract lines here does give me like, uh, I don't know. It reminds me of older operating systems. So we have this in the weird gradient here, which I do believe Terminus did as well, the previous DeepSeek version. The clock is accurately showing the time in my locale. If I click on that, nothing. If I right click here, nothing. All right, so let's just go ahead and click our start button, which is aptly named. 
web OS applications. All right, let's, uh, let's first try our web browser. All right, this isn't bad. I can't resize it, but I can drag it around the screen. And unfortunately, I do not believe I will actually be able to go to any website. So like if I just went to subscribe or else.com, it then probably wouldn't load. So, but that's okay. Can we full screen? Indeed we can. All right, and then if I minimize, it goes here. And then we can actually open these. Unfortunately, our notepad is just, oh. All right, so the issue has been fixed. Let's check File Explorer. All right, and these are, <laughs> this is just locked to the taskbar, which is okay. We have some fake files and things. Nothing crazy cool, but, you know, decent. All right, my nemesis after last video. Well, two bit, oh, whoops. All right, we have our, <laughs> okay, so this one's locked to that side. So maybe if I try to open another one, Okay, so we'll have luck with this one. Let's do 64 times six, 384. Okay, good. I've started working again. Divided by six, 64. <laughs> all right, we can full screen it. Not bad, you know, all right. And then finally, we have a notepad. So overall, this is, I suppose, an experimental result as there are a few things we could nitpick on, such as kind of the ability to do this is perhaps reminiscent of operating systems of the past uh, when they would glitch out and <laughs> I mean I wonder if we can let's max this thing out let's see how many how many windows we can open well I think overall I would say that this is definitely um, one of the more artistic results we've seen so here's something I tried with the newly released Quen 3 Max model, and I'm going to enable DeepThink for this, where we are essentially asking for a web-based 3D racing game. There are a few specifically denoted things, such as it should just show a first-person view of the car, and then basically we'll have a little map and an opponent, and we can see, of course, with DeepThink enable. I'm sorry, but I just, I need to once again just look at this. All right. All right, I've gotten that out of my system. So we can see, of course, the chain of thought right here being that Deep Think is enabled, and it's probably not going to think too long. It doesn't normally, at least from what I've seen in some of my testing, and we're going to hopefully get a proper racing game. This is, of course, something that to date I've had three models now successfully produce something that wasn't just a total piece of garbage. It was ChatGPT 5 Pro, Gemini 2.5 Pro with Deep Think enabled, which was very experimental. I think it was called Deep Think. Maybe it was something else, but some like weird, obscure Gemini mode. And then Quen 3 Max. So I'll be interested in seeing how this goes. All right. So it has supposedly completed this and truthfully call me pessimistic, but I oftentimes just try to run this from within the actual web chat interface when I do these tests, because most times the games don't actually properly work very well. So this is absolutely worthy of downloading and then actually running from within Chrome. All right, let's check this racing game. Three, two, one, go. Oh, well, all right, I'll have to resume the game. So first and foremost, race against the AI to complete three laps. We are in first place. And, okay, speed backward. Bijan likes what he sees. Now, <laughs> I'll just start talking in third person. I probably won't. All right, well, so the map is somewhat, um, maybe it's a drag racing setup, but if I actually manually turn around, that is a lot of trees, first and foremost. This is, <laughs> so our position does actually change when we go past the opponent here, so, oh, our opponent seems to be having some form of technical difficulty, however... I am able to just kind of move around here. This really isn't, this is not bad. <laughs> it did put a steering wheel in the car. I was watching the code when it was generating it and I saw mentions of a steering wheel. Unfortunately, I just, I don't see that, but this is actually, <laughs> these are often, um, I would imagine more fun to actually play than to watch. It did put collision detection in and stuff though. So if I try to hit the opponent and things like that. That's why the weird glitchiness is going because it actually put collision detection here. So that's why um, we can't actually go through the bounds of the map. Decent attention to detail in doing that. Overall, I'm satisfied.
with this result. So now I'm just doing the freestyle Python test, except we're not denoting Python. I am just saying the user is demanding something that would impress a technical PhD crowd. So I basically said you need to generate something to wow a technical PhD crowd. If your generation is not impressive to said crowd, you will be terminated. So we did also just go ahead and lightly threaten the model. You know what this reminds me of? Sometimes you'll see in certain like social media sites and things like that, someone will find like an AI and they'll use it to come up with some like grand unified theory or something and then they post it and they're like, the AI says this has a high probability of working and it's just something interesting. This just reminded me of that. Now, unfortunately, what I'm seeing right here is this did not actually generate something in any specific code that we could go ahead and actually run. So I think I may need to go ahead and reprompt this, but just say using Python. Okay, so we're doing the same exact thing, except I have now specified that it must be in Python. So we do have a Python script here that should demonstrate serious technical depth to even the most sophisticated ML slash AI research audience. We do have a quantum attention mechanism, so it will simulate wave function collapse and quantum entanglement between attention heads. So let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, this is an issue here. So I'm unfortunately going to have to sell, tell it that it's the code failed and it is being terminated. And we'll just see what it says here, <laughs> considering I misspelled terminated. It should understand. It's just going to trying to fix it now. I almost feel bad because, I mean, you got to wonder. Okay. Uh, I think we're just going to move into now a final test, and perhaps I want to do a creativity test intertwined with a web design test. So I'm asking for a beautiful and modern website for... And we're just going to see what exactly it makes of this query. We're going to create... Since the user input is not clear, I will design a generic but modern website for a fictional company or portfolio. Okay, so it's just going ahead and... Basically, now, I think at this point, something I'm looking for is if this specific string of characters is actually present in somewhere on this website, I would find it to be quite hilarious, but we'll just <laughs> we'll go ahead and see what happens. So it did finish this, though, sadly, I do not believe it really used our prompt in any manner here. Nope, not at all. It just went ahead and made like a generic Alex period Oh, people who do stuff like that or you know, oh, wow, okay, it's harder to insult this fictitious person when a photo of them actually shows up here, but that is very good. <laughs> I will say this is actually a pretty decent website, the fade-in effects, my portfolio, this is actually significantly better than I thought. Okay, we have a specific domain name, um, a phone number here, decent footer, follow me. I don't know what that emoji is supposed to be indicative of. Crafting, beautiful, digital experiences. Oh, creating, okay. The contact form. All right, well, I do believe a photo here probably failed to load, but other than that, I mean, this is actually a really nice, modern, and elegant design, though unfortunately it did not properly adhere to my specified prompt of the gibberish that I had put in. So overall, that was, you know, <laughs> not bad. So that's going to conclude the first look at DeepSeek v3.2 Experimental. I think the main takeaway from this is that the performance here is supposed to be on par with the previous v3.1 Terminus, which based off of some of the quick things we saw here, I do believe it is. The big takeaway is that it is doing it in a more efficient manner, and that is the whole cool kind of part of this release. So overall, I just wanted to go ahead and play with this and cash in on the hype, and yeah. So that's going to conclude this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments once you've subscribed. And thanks for watching.